When I was 13, I decided I wanted to be a professional ping pong player. Around 17, 18, 19 years old, I looked around at all, all my heroes and all the older players and I realized nobody's making any money. It wasn't really going anywhere, money-wise at least. So I stopped playing when I was 21. Put down my racket and it took me a long 13 years before I picked it up again and started playing. I got my level back after a couple years, but it was the same thing in the US. The money in tournaments, exactly the same or worse. But at the same time, the recreational side of the sport has become really popular in the US. So I wanted to hit the road to show people what it's like to be a professional ping pong player in the US. And kind of relive my youth a little bit and see what would have happened if I was 21 and I kept playing tournaments just to earn a living. addicted person to ping pong. There's a lot of addicts in America, but he's yeah. one of the he's yeah. one of the top. By addicts. far one of the <laughs>
actually get to be that kid playing ping pong. We're Taiwanese, Chinese Taiwanese, and my mom would buy dumplings from this guy, and his wife made dumplings for the for the Chinese Taiwanese community, and he delivered the, the dumplings, uh, Mr. Shu. And it turned out that he was a ping pong coach in Taiwan. He noticed that she had two kids, and then asked if we wanted to learn from him. I said no, and my sister said yes. Eventually, I was like, "All right, fine, I'll try it out," and I got pretty good at it. That's how. That's pretty much how it started. So thanks to dumplings. But what got me hooked was Coach Shu took some of us to a tournament in Howard County, Maryland. I was sponsored by the Woodland Cemetery. <laughs> I'll never forget that. As a kid, wearing a T-shirt that says like the Howard County. Table tennis tournament sponsored by the Woodland Cemetery. <laughs> I got to compete against adults and children and women and men and just a wide variety of people, and I think that's what got me hooked. And then, of course, winning trophies and medals at the local tournaments—you know—you get a super high from that. When I was 12, I got picked to go to the. Olympic Training Center in Colorado. My peak competition years were the ages from 13 to 20. I took a 13-year break from table tennis, and in between, a lot of crazy life stuff happened. I actually learned a lot about myself, and all those experiences do help my table tennis now that I'm older. I've been rocky three times in a row now. Uh, three two, three two, and then three zero. I feel right, really I bad. Some, <laughs> some advice. So when you're playing table tennis and you have a lot of hair, you're really sweaty. <laughs> like what the fuck do you do? What did you do all those years when you had all that hair? Because I don't know how to fucking play with hair. I played blind. <laughs> you just play Half blind. the time. <laughs> your hair was just in your eyes. Yeah. Too. There was a there was a lot of things that Rocky taught me. Um, <laughs> Let me see, where do I start? To pay off your bets right after you lose. Yeah, to pay, up, to pay up my bets, and don't bet if you don't have the money. He's taught me a number of things that have uh, helped me throughout life. So I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful to Rocky for all he's done, and it's, it's made a big impact on my life. Obviously, didn't learn anything. <laughs> 25. <laughs> Man, it sucks. We're already down 25 bucks and the trip hasn't even started. Hopefully I can get some good practice in on the road and win some money at the first tournament in Knoxville. I'm pretty excited to see some new places. So wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs>